everybody. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Half of our crew is still around the brownie table outside. Go figure. Because I'm going to have to say, oh, well, I prayed that it would cool off so they all come in and eat. <laughs> That's right. Have y'all had a good holiday season, Christmas and New Year? And we had teens last weekend, was it? The teens. Now it's summertime. <laughs> springtime. You just never know what you're going to get from day to day as far as weather is concerned. Aren't you thankful we have some stability? Not some stability. We have stability in our Lord. No matter what comes our way, what the weather's like, or what circumstances have uh, come our way, the Lord's the same every day. Every day. You can depend on it. Would you stand with me? Let me pray with you. Welcome to 2023. That's hard to say. 2023. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to be here today, a brand new year. We have no clue what this year holds. The last three years have been quite interesting, to say the least. The good thing is you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can depend on you. We can trust in you. We don't, know, we don't have to wonder what you would be like or who you are or what you require or what pleases you. All of that is just the same as it's always been. Father, I pray that you would find us kneeling and praying and bowing and worshiping and praising and honoring you throughout the year. Father, help us as a church family grow in our walk with you and our fellowship with each other. Thank you for each person that's here today. I pray that you would open our hearts and minds, that we would leave here with joy in our hearts, a mission in our minds, and love to give to those that we encounter each day. And may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remain steady and let's sing a song that talks about why we're here today. You ready to sing? You got your brand new year voices with you? All right.
Are you glad you're here today? Yes. Amen. I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad to be with you. What a privilege we have to gather together in such a beautiful building. Um, in the name of our Lord. Uh, I say this all the time. I hope you don't get tired of it. I hope we, uh, if the point gets to our hearts and minds that please don't take for granted every time the church can gather. Uh, we are blessed in that way here in this country today. We can gather together and worship God. We can put his name outside on the, the sign. We can openly declare who he is without worrying about getting arrested today. So be thankful for that each day that that is possible. I want you to take a look at your bulletin. I'm not going to read through it, but I am going to highlight some things. Please take your bulletins with you at home so you can uh, look over the things and know what's coming up. And most importantly, pray for these folks. That is the main reason we have the mass announcement is to keep you updated on the prayer concerns and the praises. Uh, and then part of that is scheduling as well. But the main thing is prayer concerns. Uh, all the things that are going on. And, and I appreciate the, uh, the hostess team for providing refreshments and our fellowship time today. But it's always a struggle to get y'all in here when there's brownies left over. So I'm glad you decided to come on in. <laughs> Uh, those fellowship times are important, and I'm thankful that we can have those. Uh, if you're on the church leadership team, uh, please note there's a special meeting this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Tuesday night at 7. Uh, it's basically to, to, for us to come together and figure out what we're going to do in the next meeting and what we need to have prepared for that as far as team leaders. Uh, and we have a couple things coming up. Uh, so. Please be here Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, that's very important. If you'll notice, our Lottie Moon Christmas offering total uh, is one five 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 fifteen hundred fifty five dollars What is our goal? $2,200. I don't remember ever falling short of our goal. Um, at least, maybe that's my memory. But anyway, um, we need to uh, do something about that. So pray about that and, and keep that in mind, so we'll, you'll keep seeing that and hopefully we'll surpass that, that goal. Also, congratulations down at the bottom for new babies. Aren't you excited about babies? New babies and children, and Lisa was just saying this morning they have another one. Um, not she and Ricky, but family have another one. <laughs> babies. <laughs> uh, so exciting to see the little ones come along and they remind us of things that we have forgotten. And they bring joy to our to our lives and smiles to our faces. And it's just a reminder that God is the creator of all life. And that he is still alive and well and doing what he's always done. Providing life. Also, if you'll notice the back of the bulletin, there's our list of prayer concerns and, and um, praises and so forth. And if you got that mass announcement, you'll note uh, the Jack Tyler that's there. It's been changed to the Jack Tyler family as he did pass. I believe that was yesterday. So uh, uh, pray for that family. Uh, Hazel Dove is, uh, is getting to come home hopefully Tuesday. Is that right? So Tuesday. She's doing much better. She's giving directions now, so she's doing much better. Pray for Miss Hazel. Uh, my mom's birthday is today. She was a New Year's baby, but she had a rough night last night, so she's not able to be here with us. But uh, pray for her if you would. David Alexander, just a high, couple of highlights. He's had COVID. He is doing better. His first question yesterday was, when are you coming to see me? So uh, he's, he's feeling much better and uh, out and about. Um, Miss Roberta is, her one wing is clipped. She is uh, working with her with her right arm there. Uh, she's still still here doing doing what she's uh, I'll tell you what, Wednesday night, uh, I told her, you got to get back to work, you know. Not this broken arm thing. you got to get back to work. Um, she does her streaming for us, and it's so helpful. And those that, just like Wednesday night, our missionary couple that are in the Philippines were watching. And so that connection is very important to all those that watch and follow the services and Bible studies. Uh, so pray for her and continue to, as she, her arm continues to heal. Actually, you can find out this week, actually, what's going on, right? Wednesday, I hope. Wednesday, okay. And then you'll be here to stream Wednesday night. <laughs> no rest. 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 No rest.
Michelle got up and uh, tripped and fell face forward. She is okay except her foot. She uh, messed up her toe and she can't get her shoe on, so that's why they're not with us today. Pray for them. George Eaton is officially retired. So, whew, a long time coming. Um, so, if y'all need something done, George needs some numbers. No, I'm willing. Uh, George goes to the doctor this week. Thursday, George? Yes. Thursday. Keep George in prayer there. And um, Jack. Jack. Where's Jack? He's back there. He's, he has some back issues. So, um, pray for Jack and Patricia. So, uh, Jack's got to, he needs to, to take some time to get that figured out. Also, uh, Miss Diane has bronchitis. Diane Martin, she's not here, so pray for Diane. And Sandy as well is not here, but she's under the weather. So pray for her and others. Sickness is everywhere. Y'all know that, right? Continue Sickness to pray is for everywhere. Larry. Continue to pray for Larry. And back. Thank you. Back, what is it about our backs? We try to figure out people that can carry the figurines upstairs, and we all have back issues. So, um, anyway, continue to pray for Larry and others on the list. Uh, keep that in mind. Please take that home. Also, look at your calendar, and there will be some other things to add to the calendar. Uh, hopefully, after Tuesday night's meeting, uh, some things are coming up. Um, so, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, Children, can you all have me for just a second? I just need you for just a second. Y'all doing well? Doing good? All right. Y'all doing good today? I like your hat. Happy New Year 2023. I have one question for you today, and it's kind of a question that we have to deal with in big church today. Why do we come here to this building? Why do we come? What's our main purpose, James? Honor God. Yes, to honor God. Good, good answer, to honor God. I said one question, didn't I? How about two questions? One more. One more question. Okay. It's a great answer. To honor God. To worship God. What about when we leave this building? What is our number one priority? What's the most important thing we do outside of this building? Any answers? James, what was your answer to the first question? Honor God. Yeah. That's also the answer to the second question. To honor God. Do you know that God doesn't live in this building? I checked it out. I've looked in the closets. Everywhere. He doesn't live in this building. Where does God live? Everywhere. He lives in heaven. And the Holy Spirit lives in the hearts of His children. So whether you're in this building, or in your car, or at the store, or at the bank, or at school, He goes with you. Our number one thing is to honor God. To worship Him. Jim says He lives in heaven. Yeah. In your heart, God lives in your heart. That's exactly where He lives. That's where He wants to be in your hearts. Okay. So I'm so thankful that y'all are here. We all are, and um, we appreciate you being here. Thank you for answering the questions. Okay. Y'all free to go. Can y'all give them a hand? All right. We're going to sing a song. Wonderful, merciful Savior. We've sung this many times. Listen to the words. Uh, it says, Precious Redeemer and Friend. Who would have thought that a lamb, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? And that's mankind. You rescue the souls of men. I want you to listen to the words as we sing. Stand with us, please, and let's sing. Oh, oh, oh. 
It said that our hearts always hunger for the grace and healing of the Lord. Uh, the question has to be asked, is that really what our hearts hunger for? God's healing and grace. And mainly spiritual healing, not physical healing necessarily. Even though that's a huge part of our, our lives. Why is it that the older we get, the more decrepit we become? Our bodies just rebel, don't they? They do, and it's no fun. That's for sure. Um, are y'all doing okay on this? You need to catch up with your reading a little bit. Um, you were supposed to read Psalm of Solomon. We were supposed to read Psalm of Solomon yesterday. The whole book yesterday, which is not that long. It's just there's a lot there. It's a love letter. It's a detailed, graphic love letter. And it's very important. It's part of God's Word. So um, if you didn't get to that, back up and go over that. Because the symbolism there of our relationship to God and of His love, His love for us. That's, it's, anyway, it's very important. But the good thing for you is that this week, because we've been jumping around from book to book as we try to find it in chronological order or read it that way, starting today, you're, you're simply going to be in Proverbs, and you're going to walk through it starting with chapter 1 and move forward. You only have 21 chapters this week, so if you get a little bit of a reprieve, aren't you glad? Because some weeks are a little more intense than others. Can you always say, follow my example? Wouldn't it be good? No. No. Wouldn't you like to be able to do that? Just always say, look at what I did or what I said. Follow my example. I messed up yesterday and it dawned on me later, a couple hours later. And that's that part really bothered me more than anything that I didn't realize until a couple hours later. There was a young lady at a McDonald's drive-thru. She had a mask on, so I don't even know what she looks like. But um, it was New Year's Eve, and she's working at one of the few restaurants that were still open because I had to get a milkshake before I could come home. That was the orders. So I was doing what I was told. Anyway, um, I went through the drive-thru, and I asked her, as I always do, you know, how's your day? How's your day going? But she told me. She said, well, it's been really frustrating. I said, we've been really busy. No, not really, just frustrating. These people all have an attitude. She said, two cars in front of you, they were laughing and, at me and snickering and pointing and, and just being ugly to me. Hmm. Here's what I said. I said, you just enjoy the rest of your day. Just ignore what they did and... and You'll have just the rest of your day would be better. What did I leave out in that? Yes. That was about the most secular thing I could have done. Yes. Is tell her, the rest of your day will be fine. Just shrug it off. They're, they're just, some people are just that way. I hope the rest of your day will be fine. It was a word of encouragement. But it wasn't a Christian word pointing to the Savior. And it wasn't until a few hours later that it hit me. And I thought, how could you miss such an opportunity? I just asked her how her day was going. And she just poured out her heart. What I should have said was something to the effect that your worth doesn't come from those people. God created you specifically for a purpose. He loves you and He has plans for your life. And you are wonderfully and marvelously made by your Creator. Never forget that. Amen. That's the right answer. I failed. And I know that that won't be the only time in this new year that I'll have to fess up and ask the Lord to forgive me. But I do want that to be a wake up. And not just for me, but for us in general, that we have a specific calling in this world. And we have a specific answer for this world's problems. It's not do better, hope that things get better because maybe nicer people will run into you or you'll run into them. It always has to center around Jesus. He is the answer. He is the reason for the season every single day. So that is my prayer for us today is that when that opportunity comes, we don't fail. We stop and we watch and we let him lead us and, and lead our mouths into what to say and how to point people 
to him. Not to, hopefully, people will be better. That's, that's futile. I want to read something to you back in, in Jeremiah. I didn't give this to Sonia on the screen there, so if you want to look it up, I've mentioned it at least twice in the last three weeks. Back in Jeremiah 29, one of our favorite verses, and it used to be my favorite verse until I realized I was taking it out of context. <laughs> but it's Jeremiah 29, 11. But I went back up to Jeremiah 29, 10. It says, For thus it says the Lord, when 70 years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you to bring you back to this place. If you read earlier in this chapter, you'll find that the Lord said, I sent you into exile. <laughs> You're there because I put you there. Okay? And 70 years from now, I'll fix this issue. But he says in verse 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. And for a lot of people, that's their life verse, their important verse, but they leave out the rest of it and take it out of context, which is what I used to do. Then you will call upon me, watch this, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. That's one of God's wonderful promises. You come and pray to me, seek me, and I'm, I'm going to listen to you. Isn't that wonderful that you have the ear of the Creator? This is the secret right here in verse 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Not haphazardly, not half-heartedly. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I want you to remember that and take that into today's passage in the Matthew 2 with the Magi. Now, if you notice, the other nativity figurines have gone bottom. They are all over the place. Have you noticed? They can't decide where they want to be. The shepherd is over here headed out the door. He's going that way. Mary's here looking down at the sheep. Where is Joseph? Any, any idea where Joseph went to? He is. Joseph's back there in the back. He's just all by himself. There's the angel. And what's wrong with the manger? <laughs> Baby Jesus is gone. What is wrong with all these people and all this scenery? It's just all messed up. Christmas is past. These people don't have a purpose. Or do they? They do. They certainly do. Do you? Do I? And it can't always be that we're huddled up together around the manger, if you will. It is that we are commanded and commissioned to go out and make disciples. Go out and make disciples. The shepherd is heading out. The Bible says that they were proclaiming and telling everybody who Jesus was, what they had seen, what they had heard, which is the same thing the Magi are about to do here in the second chapter of Matthew. Mary followed Jesus. We have record of the fact that even when he was on the cross, there was Mary. She stood with him. She was part of that group of women that supported the ministry of Jesus. Joseph is not mentioned. What happened to Joseph? I would love to see that. I'd love to hear about the life of Joseph. What was it like to be the stand aside, so to speak, earthly father of the Messiah. When all of his younger siblings were his children and Mary's, how do you raise a house full of children when the oldest one is God? How do you do that? Wouldn't that be a book you'd like to read? We don't know about Joseph. He's kind of back there by himself. Dealing with life however it comes with the understanding and the promise from God that his oldest child was God incarnate. And here you have imagine that they have traveled forevermore and left their homes and their vocations and whatever else was comfortable to them and they have traveled to follow this star that they were promised years and years earlier that they have been actively looking for. Jeremiah 29, you will look for me, seek me, and find me when and only when is what it means when you search for me with all your heart. And they've done that. And now they've found the child, not the baby. They're not there at the manger. But they are bowing down at the altar. 
Go with me to, to Matthew chapter 2, if you would. Matthew chapter 2. There are seven points today. They're short, but there are seven points. Please write them down. Put them in your phone. Write them on your hand. I don't care how you write. Just remember, seven points. Okay. And by the way, 2023 is a great time to start writing stuff down. Bring a journal. Bring a pen. Something that you can write. Put it in your phone. Somehow so you can remember. And uh, maybe, if, if I can remember, we'll leave a place in the bulletin so you can write some notes there. That would be a good idea. All right. Chapter 2 of Matthew, we'll find these words starting with verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. We saw and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he began to inquire of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, and uh, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. And that's from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. When Herod the Syrian called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child, and when you have found him, report to me that I too may come and worship him. Was he being sincere? No. We find that out later on. Having heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them, until it came and stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They came into the house, saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country and by another way. I'm somehow losing my voice. And Sue's over there saying, <laughs> so, uh, help me with my voice here. Go back to uh, verse 2. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. They saw and came to worship. Henry Blackaby used to say, look for where God's working and join him there. Y'all remember that? Experiencing God. Remember? Look for where God's working and join him. We saw and have come to worship Jeremiah 29 says, if you seek him with all of your heart, he'll be found by us. They saw and have come to worship. That's the proper response. They're kneeling at the altar. They saw and they came. What if they just saw the star and stayed where they were? They would miss it, wouldn't they? It's not enough just to see. You have to move, be mobile. God is always moving us, moving us. He's the shepherd. He leads the sheep. He moves us. Sometimes we say, God, I'll follow you, but I'm not going anywhere. What? Follow insinuates movement, right? Does God always move us in the direction we want to go? No. That's why we must bow and worship at the altar. Submission. Bowing is submitting to the authority of God. We're not going to follow Him unless we see Him as an authority above us. We must bow in our hearts with our will and with our pride in order to follow Him wherever. So they saw and they have come to worship Him. I want to skip forward a couple of verses over to verse 9. And having heard the king, by the way, why is Herod not in the nativity? Y'all have to wonder about that. Why is he not in the nativity? Maybe we'll include him next year because he plays an important part. Not the godly part that we want everybody here to play, but he's an important part of the Christmas story. And he's wandering around out here somewhere. And except for the grace of God, so go I. Herod was a jealous person. He was in a position he never should have been in. And Jesus was a threat to his arrogance and his pride. Jesus could take away what he had worked so hard to get. Does that sound familiar sometimes in our own lives? There's a little Herod in us. Because it's our nature. So you work on that. Maybe next year we'll have a new figurine in the nativity. 
And having heard the king, they went their way. Lo, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them. Is God always moving in the pace you want him to move? No. But they were following the star. It went before them. They didn't say, God, I have this. How you follow me. And when I get in trouble, you bless me. Get me out of the trouble that I got myself into. But I'm going to lead the way here. They followed. The star went before them. It doesn't say at what pace. God must lead you in 2023. You and I must follow. It went on before them until it came and stood over the, where the child was. The third point, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Number three, they rejoiced. What's your attitude like from day to day? Are you the Eeyores of this world? I hope not. I hope not. He's a sad <coughs> preacher. Are you rejoicing daily? Say, well, you don't know my circumstance. I don't need to know your circumstance. You don't know my circumstance all the time. I live with long rain. <laughs> Just kidding. You're in trouble now. <laughs> I stay in trouble. Re rejoicing is not about circumstance, folks. We know this. We read it in God's holy word. Joy comes from our Savior. You can rejoice no matter what. In all things, give thanks. Not for them, in all things. No matter what you find yourself in, Rejoice. Attitude reflects who we belong to, who's on the throne of our lives. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. The next verse in verse 11, and this is the next point, and they came into the house and saw the child of Mary and his mother. They came and saw. What was, what was the first point? They saw and had come. Now they came and they saw. And sometimes it's in reverse order. Sometimes you've got to move. You have to follow God before you can see where he's leading. You can't see from here. You've got to go somewhere else and get a different perspective. You have to move. Well, I can't see the end result, so I'm going to wait for the details. You've been waiting from now on. God doesn't say, I'll give you all the details so then you'll know where we're headed. He says, you follow me, you trust me, you walk with me, and I'll show you as you go. Remember Moses in Genesis 12. Leave all these things and you go where I'm going to show you. Why? I'm not a good travel agent. Just pack up and leave and follow me. I'll show you where you're going to go and how you're going to stay and live later. But you have to get moving first. Sometimes in your life and in my life, folks, we need to go before we're going to be able to see. They came to the house and then saw the child of Mary's mother. And the fifth point, and they fell down and worshipped him, opening their treasures. They fell down and worshipped him. This is probably a petty thing, but for pastors, when you give an altar call and nobody comes, it's devastating. And to be honest with you, that's why a lot of pastors never give altar calls. It's not because the Holy Spirit's not moving. It's because they're afraid if they do and no one shows up, it's going to be negative. And I, I wish I could say I've never been there, but that's not the case. Give altar call and it's often you think, what did I do wrong? Why did I not deliver to the people? Why are they not here? And that was in the Word. They fell down and worship. Why do they have to fall down and worship? Why can't they just remain upright in our hearts? Why must we fall down in our hearts? Why must we become contrite in our in our spirit before Him? The submission, humility, an acknowledgement that He's the authority. Yes. Worshiping God is not just something that happens in this building. This is why I harp so much about what we call this building. True worship, just like we talked about with the children just a moment ago, true worship is from now till next Sunday this time. It's not just what we do in this room or in the Sunday school classes. It's how we live our lives on a daily basis. It's how we love Him back. It's how we handle our finances. It's the attitude, it's the words that come out of our mouth. It's how we speak of our Savior when somebody tells you, I've had a bad day. Worshiping God is a, a true and honorable response, a proper response, to an acknowledgement that He is King. And that's why they're at the altar. These magi are called kings, astronomers, 
They were wealthy. They were prominent. And they're bowing to show that he has a greater authority than they do. We must bow our wills, our pride, our agenda. God, this is my life. Here's what I want out of this life. Help me get it. That's, that's not the Christian life. That's not the Christ life. That's the world's definition of the Christ life. That's the health, wealth, and prosperity message. That's not biblical. The biblical message is he is king. I will bow down and worship him, not just here and now, but tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And that means to submit to his authority on a daily basis. But I don't want to do that. And my friends and my family may not like that, and my boss may not like that, and the people that I work with, they may not understand that. Does that have any bearing on whether we actually bow down and worship him or not? No. We must continue to bow down. Matter what, they fell down in worship. And, and the sixth thing here is opening their treasures. They presented to him gifts of gold, fragrances, and we talked about that before, which represented him as prophet, priest, and king. Not necessarily in that order, but they presented gifts. What do you have that you can present to the Lord every day? Talents. Talents. Your heart. Gratitude. What was that? Yes, your attitude. No, I said gratitude. Gratitude, thank you. Gratitude, yes. But attitude also. Attitude and gratitude, that's right. Good too. What did you say, Marsha? I was repeating. Oh, you were repeating. Somebody else said something. Time. 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 Oh, my. We need to have a whole series on time. Because that's something that we cling to, something that's precious to us, and we will not let go of. It's my time. No, it's not. It's his time. It's his time. All these things are the gifts that we can and must present to God. Our favorite things. The things that we say, I don't want you messing with that. We present gifts to him. That cost us something. Not something you pick up at the dollar store at the last hand and say, oh, that will suffice. No. If it will suffice, that's not what he wants. He wants something that costs you something. Something that's precious to you. Something that... That shows I love you more than this. I love you more than these. I love you more than anything. You are number one in my life. They presented gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God, this is point seven, the last one, in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. Return a different way. We've talked about this, but I think we mention it just about every year. An encounter with Christ means. When we go back, we don't go back the same. We don't return the same. In their case, they didn't return the same way, meaning the same direction, the same route. But I guarantee you, they didn't return the same people either. They had encountered the Savior. We talked about Simeon the other day, the other night. Simeon had been waiting for the Messiah, and when they took Jesus to the temple to be circumcised, he saw and he said, I've been waiting for the Messiah. Now I can die. Are you at that point where you say, I have met the Savior, I've encountered the Savior, I've, I've, I've bowed down and worshipped the Savior throughout my life, and now I'm ready for what's next. I'm ready for eternity because I am submitted to my Lord. The encounter and the response. That's the sermon for today. First of all, have you encountered the Christ? Have you encountered the Christ? And secondly, what was your response? What is your response? There is only one response acceptable in the sight of God. To bow down and worship. And that is not a one-time deal. That is an everyday occurrence. It is a choice. It's an act of submission, of obedience, of love. And it's every single if I asked you if there was a list of anything in your life that you would refuse to give to God if He asked, if there's anything you would write down on that list, then you need to rethink this sermon. If there is anything, my job, my family, my church, my time, my health, my finances, anything on the list that you would withhold from God if He asked, 
then there's a problem. We all must find ourselves at the altar in our hearts every day. Every day. Do you want 2023 to be a better year than 2022? Yep. I do too, folks. The problem with us so many times is the church is talking just like the secular world is. Just like I did yesterday with that lady. What we're talking about is we want our finances to go further. We want better health insurance. We want mortgage rates to go down. We want these things, gas prices to go down. That's our list. That's how 2023 can be better. That's not what this is talking about. And that's not what the sermon is about. 2023 to be better because I am submitted and yielded to my Lord. I am bowing down and worshiping Him on a daily basis. Whether gas prices go up or sky high. I'm going to worship Him every day. I'm going to find a way to make disciples as He has commanded me, not asked me, commanded me to make disciples. And I'm going to have the right attitude, an attitude of gratitude. <coughs> every day. Do you have a reason to smile each day? You do. If God lives in your heart, you belong to Him. You're His child. You know how the story ends. Eternity is for those who have yielded to Him and continue to walk with Him. How many of us are perfect? You ever make a mistake? Once or twice. Once or twice. I'm with you. The only way we can be perfect is complete in Him. I love the, the, the words of the songs that we just sang. Christ came to give us, to free us. Not to just put His thumb on us and say, y'all, don't, you don't measure up. But came to free us from the bonds of sin, from ourself, from our flesh. Folks, live in that, live in that peace and that reality every day. Get up with a smile on your face and say, I don't know what's going to happen today. I might end up in the hospital, be in a wreck. Who knows? I'm not a prophet. I don't know. I have no clue. What I do know is God is alive and well. He's on his throne. He loves me with all of his heart and he always will. And when I do leave this planet, I'm going to heaven to spend with him because he's a gracious, loving, merciful God. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with us? Let's sing this song in closing. The altar is always open. Whether you come to this physical altar or pray in your heart, Emmanuel, God with us, with us.
Does God love you? Yes. You need to be reminded of that every day. He loves you. Period. You can say that every day. Period. He loves you. The question sometimes that we need to ask is, do I love him back? Does my life say I love him back? Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your kindness and your grace and your mercy. I thank you for a brand new year. Father, I pray that you would find us at the altar in our hearts, bowing before you, worshiping you, leaving the things that we cling to so desperately in order to see you, in order to follow you. Lord, I pray that each person here in this building and those watching on Facebook would come to an understanding it is only the Christ life that's acceptable to the Father. And only Christ can live it in and through us. We must be yielded, humble, bowing with our, our pride and our agendas and everything that we hold dear, given to the Lord, laid at the feet of our Master. And ultimately, Lord, may we give ourselves to you to be used as you see fit. Father, use us to spread the gospel, to make disciples, to teach this world that you love, you love, you love, you love. And that there is a way to be free from the hold of sin. And there is a way to have eternity with the Lord. And that way is called Jesus. Help us to mention Him quite often to those around us. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make His face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you peace in Jesus' name.